Hey gang, Carl White here, broadcasting here in the communications room in the secret headquarters of the Mortgage Marketing Animals. You're listening to Loan Officer Freedom, your spotlight of awesomeness for everything AI mortgage related. I've got the pilot in command here today, Mr. Chris Johnstone again. Dude, this AI stuff is on fire. It is unbelievable how fast it's, it's moving. It, it, it is. And, and all the good, you know, when I first started this, uh, uh, looking at this AI, I thought, all right, it's going to help me help me write emails. whoop de freaking do and come <laughs> to find out. And that's nothing wrong with that. Right. Nothing wrong with that. But come to find out that was just scratching the surface. So uh, so what are we going to talk about here today? Uh, uh, Mr. AI mortgage himself. Well, certainly there has been some advancements in AI since we last talked. So we'll touch on that very briefly, but I think that we should take everything and frame it around referral partner marketing, because that is where I'm seeing members in the Freedom Club and members of MMA that are still continuing to grow and keep their volumes up. That's where the deals are coming from. So let's take AI and apply it to referral partner marketing. Yes, that sounds good. By the way, did you see, I think it was, and this is off the top of my head, uh, so that's my little asterisk for uh, for for the attorneys, uh, but I think it was I know the number, but I think the I think it was over the last five months, and it might have been six, but I think it was five, the last five or six months that uh, uh, of the the members that we tracked, the average one uh, in the in the Freedom Club had increased their business twenty two point nine percent. Now you wow. might think, hey, twenty two point nine percent, like whatever. Number one, Apple computer would love to see 22.9% uh, growth in their business. <laughs> Number two, I think the average loan officer, I saw some numbers. I think it was like down 40%. Oh, yeah. So would you rather be down 40 or up 22.9? Uh, so uh, really good stuff. Anyway, so, uh, so let's talk about AI and referral partners. How do I do it? What's going on? So I think the first thing that's important to understand is that ChatGPT can now search the internet in real time. There's still a ton of people. So you and I wait, have wait. released it. Wait, what? I, I thought Chat I thought ChatGPT cut off at like 2021 or something like that. No. So they have now come out and like your base ChatGPT, um, you can now search Bing in real time. So you can ask it a question. It will go onto the internet visit all of the websites, pull in all of the data, and then give you back what you're looking for based on real-time data from the internet. Now, do I have to tell it, hey, I want you to go search on Bing? Or do, like if I go put in what's the best-selling car for 2023, it'll, it'll do that automatically? Yeah. Oh, so take it even one further. So find me the top real estate agents in Phoenix, Arizona. And you can watch it, and it'll say searching. And it'll go do a search on Bing and then it'll say reading and it will show you the website that it's reading and it will go through and it'll read realtor.com. It'll read Zillow. It'll read all of the different sites. It'll even read newspaper articles that have been posted in Phoenix, Arizona about here's the top five real estate agents this week. It'll go find the Remax blog post where they did the announcement of the top people and only find the ones that are in Phoenix. So it'll literally go out, do the searches, read the websites, and then come back and give you the results. In a blink of an eye. Uh, so it actually takes a little bit of time. It might take a minute or two, but like you press the prompt, go get a coffee, come back, and you have all the answers. You haven't had to do anything. Very interesting. So, so our topic today is uh, using AI to attract referral partners, get loans from referral partners, uh, whether they're real estate agents, title companies, divorce attorneys, uh, financial planners, business owners, like insert in people that, uh, that can refer to us. How do we use that piece of knowledge to do, to get more, to get, to get more loans? Yeah, absolutely. So, as you know, the, f the first thing in getting the right referral partners is making sure you've got the right list. So you can now use ChatGPT or Claude with Anthropic to go out and actually do that research and get a list. But the other thing that it's incredibly powerful for is if you're using one of these other services to go get a list that looks at their production volume and that sort of thing, you get that list. Well, you can take the contacts from that list put that into artificial intelligence or chat GPT and say, Hey, go find me this person and bring me back all the links to their social media. 
And so it'll go out and it'll find that person. It'll find their website. It'll find their LinkedIn. It'll find their X account, their Facebook, and hyperlink them right in the conversation within ChatGPT. So then you can take that information, go put it on a spreadsheet, and then zap that to an automated system that goes out and reaches out to them. Or you can manually do it. But right there, you can now connect with that person almost instantly with LinkedIn, Facebook, you go follow all their profiles, like all their stuff. And away you go, you now have all of the enhanced information about everybody on your list where everybody else is just email and calling. Now you've got this whole other aspect of social media where you can reach out and there are AI based tools where you can input a contact, input their social media. It will automatically go out and like their content when they're post, it will automatically go out and engage with those people. If you want to get really advanced with it. That's very interesting. You know, that's definitely a, I don't know, unfair advantage is the right way because anybody can do it. So it's, it's unfair to those that actually do something right. Yeah. Right. It's funny how that works. <laughs> uh, Cause one thing, when I, when I go do my meetings, I have uh, one of my assistants uh, in the office, they go do exactly what you just said. I've been paying somebody and they, they go do that. And then they give me a little cheat sheet that I read right before I go in the meeting. So he's like, okay, so Chris Johnson, you know, he, he's, he's got a wife. Here's her name. He's got, you know, 2.3 kids. Uh, he, he likes back, uh, uh, backpacking, uh, went to Costa Rica. So it just give me some little talking points that when we get in there, you know, and I have an, I, you know, just some, like some icebreakers, you know, I know a little bit about you. So what I'm hearing you say this thing could do all, give me all that information, and there's my cheat sheet. So if I'm going to have that coffee meeting or I'm meeting them at the closing, uh, the listing agent, at the closing, uh, I've got a cheat sheet. That's very interesting. Yeah. Dude, it's, I'm still, I'm still, so, so when I do this search of give me this, the top agents in 2023 in Pinellas County, I don't have to tell it to go check Bing. It's going to go do that automatically. Yep. That's very interesting. Is, is that new? It is. Yep. Okay. Very interesting. And, Another, and you know what? Let me let me timestamp this because uh, on this AI stuff, it needs to be timestamped because it's changing so rapidly in a good way. Like it's getting better and better. So we're recording this uh, at the very end of October of 2023. So I just want to insert in this. Sometimes people say, "Hey, listen to the episode," and went, "Well, that was four years ago, right?" So <laughs> uh, so I, I just wanted to timestamp that. So cool. All right. So uh, so this will give me a great way to make sure I'm talking to the right agent. Chris, I've always thought one of the biggest mistakes people make or loan officers make by far is trying to get business from people that don't have business to give you. Oh, yeah. And so you've got to qualify the agents and you're not qualifying them as human beings. You're qualifying their work and how many deals they do because they're not doing any. If they're doing one deal every other month or every third month or every fourth month or something like that, uh, there's, it's not enough there for me to go after. So I have to make sure that I'm going after the ones that's actually qualified because otherwise I do the right activity to the wrong person. And I tell myself it's not working. I'm no good. They don't like me. None of that's true. That's all hogwash in my head. I'm, okay. simply, I'm simply going after the wrong people. So this helps me go after the right people. What else, man? So campaigns have just taken a massive leap forward because ChatGPT and the other AI language models, most of them have open AI APIs on the back end of them now, okay. which means what, it, you, what does that mean? What does that mean? API is just like a communication doorway that's uh, the side of the building instead of the front of the building. So rather than me having to go to chat GPT and interact with it, I can take one of my software programs that I use and it can communicate with chat GPT through the side door. And that allows the two computer systems to talk to each other. And so what we've done is we've taken the CRM that we work with and we've opened up the side door communication with chat GPT. So now what we're doing is we're taking the qualified list of agents that we want to reach out to. And Carl, you and I both know if you make the calls and you follow the scripts that are inside the mortgage marketing animals, if you follow the daily success plan, it only works every single time that somebody actually follows it and does it. But where a lot of people fall down is the phone is 10,000 pounds. It's like really difficult to remember and have the self-discipline every week to do the same thing at the same time with the same script and do the outreach. So what we do is we take the qualified list, we get it as big as we possibly can, and we load it into a CRM campaign. 
But now what we're able to do is we're able to send that initial outreach with the email and the text message. And you can change that as markets change. And if you want a, a specific weekly message to go out, you can research it, create that on ChatGPT, you send it out. And then what our system does is it sits and it waits. And if somebody responds, we take that response, put it into a prompt, send it out the side door of the CRM over to ChatGPT and say, hey, this person just responded with this. Here's the message that they're responding to. Here's all the information that you need about my company. Here's my website. Here's my social media. Here's the link to my Google profile with all my ratings and reviews. Respond back to this potential referral partner that just replied back to me. And then ChatGPT writes the response and sends it back into the CRM. Now, when I originally built this, we just had it sending messages back and forth, which was crazy to watch people having text messages with AI back and forth. But as soon as I started telling our clients about it, they were like, whoa, hold up. Mm -mm. I'm not good with ChatGPT talking to my potential referral partner. That's got to be my... And when you say your clients, you mean your loan officer clients that, that you help with their digital marketing and getting more closings and whatnot. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. I just want, not, not the end, not the consumer direct loaning money to, but in your case, the loan officers. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So our, yeah, our friends. And so I said, okay, great. Well, let's do this. We're going to send that response from chat GPT into another text message or email that notifies you. Hey, we just got a response from a realtor. Here's what I'm going to say back to them. Is that okay? And so let's just say it's a text message. It can be a text or an email. You get this text message, you're in a meeting and it's like, this is what the person said. Here's my response. Do you approve it? Then you just text message back. Yes. And the system will send the message to the referral partner. If it's no, all you do is you go into the system, you rewrite the response in it, send it back to the person and the AI learns from the response so that the next one gets even better. And so what we've done is we've allowed it because previously you could only put like 20, maybe 30 people on that, like qualified agent list for you to be reaching out to once a week. Yeah. Now it's scalable and that's the power of AI. It does those really highly targeted, really highly valuable activities at scale. So when the responses come back, the loan officer is just responsible for the conversations with the people that are actually having communications. So it gets rid of all the cold calling and that's been replaced by AI. Wow. That's really interesting stuff. I love the way that it sends me a message. Hey, this is what I'm going to say. Is this okay? And then it learns. Cause you know, really what you don't even have to do that for a very short period of time. And then it, it could totally take over all your, uh, your questions and answers. Cause I find, you know, we get the same, I don't know, 10 yep. questions a thousand times, right? It's yep. the same, both from, from real estate agents, from the title company, from the borrowers and the co bars from the listing agent. We get the same, each one has its own set of 10 questions over and over and over and over and over. So it wouldn't take that long to train it. Uh, the, you know, uh, you know, when they ask this, say this, and dude, it would sound just like you doing it. And I, I already, I, I, I can go and chat GPT and say, Hey, write this email in the way that Carl White would. And I, I guess chat GPT know, knows me and dude, it'll write it like, holy cow, that's exactly how I would write it. So it's, uh, it can take on, not can, it will take on, if you allow it, it will take on your personality and it'll answer like, cause some people are a little bit more relaxed like I am. Yep. And some people are a little bit more formal, nothing wrong with that, just different approach, you know, some people a little bit more formal and that, and you, so formal people want it to sound formal and then, you know, more casual people want it to sound more casual. So uh, if you want it to wear a suit, it'll wear a suit. If you want to wear a polo shirt, it'll wear a polo shirt. So yeah. uh, Good stuff, man. Yeah. Well, we got a few more minutes and uh, you got something else. So the offer I'm finding is a really big part of how we're providing value through AI uh, to referral partners, because getting the list, reaching out, getting conversations and getting them to agree to an appointment is one thing. But once you actually have the appointment with them, getting them to take that next step, getting them to send that first deal. And what we've discovered over time is that it's not necessarily about having the perfect pitch or the perfect script. It's more about 
being in front of that real estate partner or that referral partner at the moment when they need you. It's more of a timing issue than it is per se a scripting issue, even though scripts help, they both help. And so that's again where AI comes in because when it's up to us, we'll just forget to follow up. I mean, how many referral partners have you done business with in the last two years that just you're not following up with them? And that's like the low hanging fruit. So what we do is we take campaigns and we put real time information into them. And then once a week or every couple of weeks reaches out to those referral partners. And then it always asks for the business at the bottom, because again, that's a huge sticking point where people don't get the deals just simply because they don't ask. And so having the AI outreach with real time information that's useful and helpful to that real estate agent but also asking for the business every single time and just making sure that that process is happening consistently in the background without the loan officer having to do it, uh, we find makes a really big difference. You know what I just, I just, um, I don't know if everybody does this, but I think in pictures, right? It's just the way my brain works. And I just got a picture of a pilot flying a 747 and she puts it on autopilot and these days, I think everybody knows this. Maybe they don't want to know this, but I think everybody knows it. These days, when she hits autopilot, that plane will take off. Yep. That plane will get, get to altitude. That plane will descend at the appropriate time. Uh, it'll avoid the thunderstorms. Uh, it'll avoid all the other aircraft. It'll avoid the mountains. Way better than a, a human would. And it actually, these days, they land the plane. They literally do everything. The only thing it doesn't do so far is taxi. That's hmm. it. Everything else is all autopilot. And what I'm seeing, but there's still a pilot, yep. right? You still have the lady or you still have the gentleman uh, with, with, the, with the captain's hat on that, that's the pilot. And kind of what I'm getting a mental image of is we're flying a 747, which is AI, and it's doing all this stuff for us, but we're still the captain of the ship. Like we okay. still have the input. We can still override the system in those rare instances, right? In those rare instances. And the more we fly that plane, the more that plane recognizes our touch, how we take off, how we land, how we descend, um, how we avoid the storms. And God knows we get storms, right? We get storms. Um, that's a pretty equal picture here, isn't it? I think absolutely that it is. Yeah, it's amazing. Hey, uh, so uh, Chris, uh, uh, real quick, and, and we're in closing here. I know we're both up on the clock here. Uh, we actually we were having another conversation. I said, "Dude, let's hit the record button and and get as much as we can." We and I know we both have a hard stop here in a few minutes. Uh, you and I, uh, I was uh, uh, honored by having you fly down here uh, uh, about a week ago. And you and I uh, shot a whole bunch of training videos that we're giving away for free, uh, no catch, uh, on the loan officer and AI, you know, training. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that? For sure. So what we've done is we've figured out basically like 12 different campaigns that are the most effective for loan officers. And we've taken a lot of what actually what we just talked about and applied them to those fundamentals. So if you think of the things that have always worked in the mortgage business, the things that we know work, and we've just automated them so that they happen consistently and they happen effectively. And so in the training that you and I made, we show all 12 of those campaigns. And then basically I walk you through in detail four of them and it's all free. Uh, we had to break it down into four separate videos because we tried <laughs> we to do one big one and it was like, Okay, that's the fire hose. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants, you can't drink from a fire hose. We need these little snippets. So we put them into four separate ones. Um, the second video is about database. Third video is about referral partners. And then the fourth video is about marketing and how to actually drive inbound phone calls. And the first one, we give away our 10 best AI tools, or our 10 favorite AI tools for people to get started with. Because a lot of people in the mortgage business are looking at AI right now and they're like, how do I get started? So video number one is how to get started and then we walk you through the rest of it. So people can go to loaitraining.com, totally free, opt in, you get access to all four videos. Um, and I really think that we're gonna make a big impact in the mortgage community because Carl, I believe 
AI powered loan officers are the ones that are going to have the edge. And when the market shifts a little bit in the future, the ones that are ahead of it, man, it's just going to be awesome. You, you know what it really, it, I, I, when we were recording those videos and, and, and depending upon when you listen to this, uh, all four of them are available for you to watch now. And it might be, I know they're still rendering a couple of them. So it might be that you get one this week, or, or I, I think there's two up, two, two of them's up. I think I went and looked this morning. I think there's two of them up. Uh, number three and number four will be up shortly. And so as you listen to this, they might already be there. But if it's not, go ahead and watch the first two. Trust me, there's enough on those two. And then we'll notify you uh, when number three and number four uh, get released. But but we've already recorded them there. So it's as quick as they can get them rendered. I, and I think it's the perfect mirror. Like what you and I have always bring together. And we've done this for years, Chris. Uh, we've worked together probably in like the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so. Is we have that perfect marriage of the old school, right? The proven strategies that just flat out work. Yep. Come to find out working with referral partners works. Come to find mm -hmm. out if you got deals in the pipeline and with the appropriate scripts, you call the borrower, the co-borrower, the listing agent, the buying agent, the title company, the closing attorney. Come to find out we actually get more deals when we do that. Not just a few more, but a lot more. Come to find out if we work our past database. I just talked to a guy this morning on the Loan Officer Breakfast Club. Dude had nine loans that he's closing uh, this month from nothing but his past database. Nothing, nothing, not referrals, not not ads, 100% from his past database, nine. And that, that story happens over and over. So come to find out these things actually work. Come to find out if we actually follow up on those people that we, uh, that we pre-approved in the past and they haven't bought a home yet. Come to find out uh, if we follow up with those people at work. The key is, is how do we automate this stuff? So while we're generating yet even more new people coming in, that we have systems in place that can, like we put it on autopilot and it closes that business for us. It's just a perfect marriage. So, uh, so you just go to loaitraining.com, like you're getting trained, loaitraining.com. And, uh, and it's our gift to you. So cool. Anything else, uh, Chris, we think we covered it. Okay. No, I think that was absolutely fantastic, Carl. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And thank you to everybody for listening. Great hearing you. So, Hey, thanks so much for, uh, uh, for everybody for tuning in. Hey, do us a favor and frankly, do your friends a favor and forward this episode to three of your favorite loan officer friends, they'll appreciate it. And we will too. And, uh, uh you, you are absolutely welcome to share the L O A I training.com site. Uh, for them to watch that too. So uh, good stuff. Hey, thanks again, everybody. We appreciate it. And we'll see you on the inside at loaitraining.com. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chris.